Let's say you just got a Nintendo Switch, or maybe you only have a couple games for it, and you're given $60 to expand your library. So you go out, buy your Super Mario Odyssey, or Breath of the Wild, and... shit. Don't get me wrong, these AAA games are great, but for newcomers to the Nintendo Switch, you can get a lot more value from that same $60. But there's tons of cheap eShop games out there, and it's tough to tell what's good and what's not, so I compiled a list of games that not only give you a great feel for what the Switch is all about, but are also incredibly quality titles in their own regard. Before I get to the first game on this list, if you enjoy and find value in videos like these, smash that like button to get this video in front of more people, it means a lot to me. With that said, the first game in my $60 Switch library is Ukulele and the Impossible Layer. This is one of my favorite 2D platforms of the last decade, undoubtedly, and for $14.99 on sale, you can't get a more polished and quality game. You know the developer Rareware, those guys that made stellar games for the Super Nintendo and Nintendo 64? You know, games like Banjo-Kazooie, Conker's Bad Fur Day, and Donkey Kong Country? Well, they didn't make the game, they were bought up by Microsoft a long time ago, and the company allegedly creatively held back many talented devs. This obviously would cause many of them to leave, and a lot of them got together and formed their own studio, Platonic Games, and they developed this game. That being said, the game feels just like Donkey Kong Country, and I don't mean the Super Nintendo titles, I mean the current Retro Studios developed games. Things like the prolonged roll and having your sidekick on your back were introduced in the newer games and adopted here, they're nowhere to be seen in the older games. But while the gameplay has a striking resemblance to the newer games, I feel the level designs more resemble the older games. The levels are incredibly fun to play through, and there's this gimmick where events in the hub world cause the level to change forms, which changes the whole way you go about beating it and is a really innovative and creative twist. This overworld slash hub world is probably the most lacking part of the game, but it does offer some good puzzles and never gets in the way too much. Overall, it's a really enjoyable experience through and through, and if you like platformers, this definitely needs to be purchased as soon as possible. If you aren't quite sold on the game and want to learn more about it, I made a separate video that's way more in depth a few months ago that you can check out via that card. Okay, next game on this list is the game I just recently picked up and cannot stop playing. It has a really stupid name, but don't let that turn you off, because Ultimate Chicken Horse is one of the best multiplayer games on the console. And coming in at just under $9 when on sale, this game is worth every penny. Not only is it great for local multiplayer, but you can play online too, either with strangers or in private lobbies where you can invite friends both local and online, and they can be on any platform, which is great. The main event is party mode, and you start by voting for a stage. Each one is entirely different, but has the same fundamentals, a start, finish, and some obstacles. The default ones are super basic, but as you play, you unlock some, and they get more and more interesting in concept, but they're all essentially blank slates. When the round starts, a box opens up and there's tons of placeable items inside, whether those be platforms, projectiles shooting weapons, or a flower that screams and slugs you when you touch it. Each player races to grab the item they want and places it wherever they feel so inclined, then everyone tries to to reach the finish. If you all finish, nobody gets points, but if only a few of you do, points are given to the players that finish, and additional points are given for being the only one to win, finishing with a coin, setting a trap that killed someone, making a nice comeback, etc. At the beginning of each game, it's really basic, but by the end, yeah, pure chaos. There's tons of strategy too, if you have a lead and know there's only a few rounds left, you can do your best to make the level impossible, and your friend has to figure out how to combat that and actually beat it. It can be played with as much or as little thought as you want, but either way, it's a total blast. There's more than just party mode too, there's creative mode, which which is the same thing, but rather than having a box with random items, you can choose anything. There's challenge mode, which lets you attempt user-created levels to play more like a 2D platformer, and there's free play, which lets you create your own levels, whether those be designed for party mode or challenge mode. That adds a whole new element to the game and basically makes it a simplified version of Super Mario Maker, which is awesome. Just the party mode is worth it, and it's one of the best multiplayer experiences I've had in recent years, but the additional modes add so much value and even make it a really affordable alternative to Mario Maker, so go buy it. Do it. This next game is just as good, but couldn't be more different. It's one of the most chill and relaxing experiences out there. Yeah, I'm talking about Stardew Valley. This game's magic can't quite be articulated. Calling it an Animal Crossing or Harvest Moon ripoff would be a major disservice to it, as it's something truly special in its own right. The sense of community plays a major role in the game, as every character you interact with feels like a real person, and talking with them is interesting. They don't just have one trait and repeat the same lines like the villagers do in New Horizons. They have real things to say, and as you talk to them, you build a genuine connection with them, and they open up to you more. When you get close enough, you can hang out with them, go into their bedrooms, and things like that, which provides further incentive to befriend people. You can even bring them different items and gifts to make them like you more, and it's cool that they have different reactions to things. One person might hate an item, and another person will love it. In Animal Crossing, they'll be like, OMG, thank you so much, I've wanted a seeming pile of shit for so long. Here, you could buy someone a pop with your hard-earned money, give it to them, and they're like, you. These characters with actual personalities are really the game's greatest strength, and in this regard, it's far better than New Horizons. You can even have pets. Some lady randomly showed up and gave me a cat. Hey, little Sparta. That's an old reference now, jeez. You don't have nearly as much control over customizing your town as in Animal Crossing, but you can do way more with your plot of land. Farming is a big part of the game, and cultivating your land into a beautiful landscape and efficient farm is satisfying and rewarding. There's tons of different crops you can grow, and you can either eat them to gain energy and health, or sell them. The possibilities for your farm are endless, but you can only do so much in one day. When your energy 
energy meter gets too low, your character starts slugging around and eventually passes out, I guess? But this encourages you to stop working at some point to go explore the town and interact with the community, which is nice. And the cool thing is the fact that the time in game isn't linked with real time like in Animal Crossing. In that game, I usually only found time to play at night, which meant nothing was ever open and it was always dark out, but here you essentially have full control over the time of day. And there's a crafting element that's way better implemented than the one in New Horizons. There you have to go to a workbench to craft things, including tools, and the fact that your tools break so often makes it a pain in the ass to do much of anything. There were more things to craft to spruce up your house, but that did not weigh the hassle of constantly crafting new tools. Here your tools don't even break, and you can craft tons of stuff right from your inventory, which is super convenient and makes the experience far better. And there's even some combat elements in the game, as you can enter caves and fight a number of strange looking beasts down there, but it's definitely lacking, though the items they drop can be pretty valuable. But all of that only scratches the surface of what the game offers. I've only sunk a few hours into it thus far, and I know I'm leaving a lot out already, but that just leaves you with a lot to discover for yourself, which is a big part of the game's magic, so go play it. Okay, next up, coming in at $15 on sale, we have Burnout Paradise Remastered. I had never played a Burnout game before, but it didn't take long for me to get a grasp of how to play and have a hell of a time. It's an arcade racing game with this huge world filled with tons of ramps and shortcuts to allow you to blaze through it. Most stoplights have missions you can attempt when you stop at them, and they range from a standard race to trying to destroy X amount of rival cars, and they're awesome. It is so satisfying to drive into the side of another car at 120 miles per hour and watch it get absolutely obliterated. The driving mechanics themselves are really good, taking sharp turns is a breeze and being able to boost to go even faster is quite the rush. There's tons of different cars you can drive and they all handle really well. Bikes, on the other hand, not so much. It feels like these were kinda shoehorned in there. The gameplay doesn't feel all too different, they handle worse, and it's easier to get them destroyed, so stick with cars. There's a ton of missions in this game, and when I say a ton, I mean a ton. The sheer amount of content is incredible. I put quite a bit of time into this one as well, and still hardly have any progress to show for it. It's a great game, and a fantastic game to be able to take on the go and gradually make progress in. It isn't a must-have game for the system, but it's still a crazy fun game, with enough to keep you busy for quite a while, making it plenty worth it for new Switch adopters. That leaves right around 11 left, and this is going to stretch pretty far and get us three more really solid purchases. The first of which, and my favorite of the three, is Celeste, one of the best indie games I've ever played and an absolute must-buy for any Switch owner went on sale for a measly five bones. This game has you playing through numerous semi-open-ended levels with some of the most fun platforming and puzzle-solving mechanics I've ever played with. Your moveset is pretty basic though, you can jump, climb walls, jump from walls, and do this air boost thing, but how all of this is implemented from level to level is so creative and provides tons of variety. You get a couple additional abilities as you progress, but for the sake of simplicity, we'll stick to these. Each stage will introduce this simple concept, and by the end of the level, you'll be a pro, and the sections you'll be working through will be tough as hell. This game is not afraid to challenge you. Each level even has a B-side, which applies the level's gimmick in the most difficult way that devs could think of, and it's f***ing fantastic. The story is perhaps the most intriguing aspect of the game, though. It's about this young girl climbing a mountain and eventually growing to accept herself for who she is. I'm not trying to overgeneralize it, but I also don't want to spoil anything, so that's just what it boils down to, but the way everything is presented to the player is astonishing and is sure to keep you engaged in the plot throughout. Story, beautiful. Gameplay, enjoyable. Level design's creative. There's really nothing this game lacks, and if any of this sounds remotely interesting to you, I implore you to go and experience this for yourself. It's one of my favorite games on the console. The next game is nowhere close to it in quality, but it does add some variety to your library for sure. Thief Simulator is a game that's constantly on sale for only $2, and I can certainly see why. It screams cheap in many areas, but it's still pretty enjoyable, and for that price, you can't beat it. You play a thief and go around looting houses, avoiding tenants and cops, and the more you steal, the more you can trade in for money. It's simple in premise, yeah, but there's a lot to it, from stealth elements, trying to be as quiet as possible or hiding from the cops, to lock picking, window breaking, and getaway driving. The controls are very clunky on the Switch though, and you can really tell it was designed with a keyboard and mouse in mind. You have to use the right stick to aim at things in order to interact with them, which is so imprecise and unideal, but with a mouse I'm sure it works great. Poor control scheme aside, the mechanics in this game are solid, and there's a decent amount of strategy in the game. Each house has a few tips to break in and get out without getting caught, so you have to think through each approach you take and plan it out to be successful. And there's a nice amount of content in the game, with many different drops to take on and streets to loot, which is great. It's a pretty solid package, and for $2, you can't go wrong. That leaves $4, which is just enough for a one-month subscription for Nintendo Switch Online. Should you buy just one month for $4 when you can get a full year for $20? No, but if you're on the fence about it, use the remainder of your $60 to give it a try and see if it's for you. Also, it lets you play a bunch of NES and Super NES games, which adds a crap ton of value. And with this ability to play online, I highly recommend you download Rocket League, which is now totally free to play and it's an absolute blast. I'm not gonna try to sell you on this one, it's free and it's car soccer. Nuff said. The Switch version doesn't run the best, but it does the job and is a perfectly functional version of the game. So yeah, if I were helping a friend pick out games for his brand new Nintendo Switch, I'd recommend him Ukulele 
Alien the Impossible Layer for $15, Ultimate Chicken Horse for $9, Stardew Valley for $10, Burnout Paradise for $15, Celeste for $5, Thief Simulator for $2, and a one month Nintendo Switch Online membership for $4. But those are just my picks. I'd love to know what some of your favorite budget titles on the Nintendo Switch are down in the comments. Maybe even include your own $60 starter guide. And with that said, thank you so much for watching. If you like what you see, leave a like, and if you want to see more videos like this one, you should definitely subscribe. If you want to watch more videos like the one you just finished up, check out my ukulele in the Impossible Layer video linked there, or maybe the other one I decided to link up. Thanks again for watching, I'll see you later.